16 trillion dollars wow how do you get to that number Sure, absolutely. We looked at all the different gaps in economic, uh, ra racial economic gaps, so wage gaps, education gaps, housing, um, certain aspects of wealth. And we added them all up and we said, suppose you didn't have these gaps. Suppose people had access to housing uh, to live wherever they wanted to live and they had access to, businesses had access to uh, funding. Um, suppose all students had equal access to affordable and quality education. How much would this cost? And we added up the numbers and we compared it to GDP. And it turns out that over the last 20 years, indeed, it's equivalent to $16 trillion worth of lost opportunity for the U.S. economy. Now, my colleagues at Bloomberg Business Week profiled you and your efforts to make change on Wall Street. I understand that you wouldn't even put your photograph in the Citigroup email system because you would worry that people would judge your work based on your photo. I'm sure there are plenty of other people out there who feel the same way. With those kind of challenges, how do we even begin to move forward? Indeed, uh, when you think about uh, these gaps, um, it runs along the spectrum in terms of income and experience and even within different sectors. So for example, someone could make it to the higher echelons of the financial sector, but still feel that they're not included. And so uh, company culture is very important to make sure that employees are treated fairly, that they are being adequately compensated, uh, commensurate with their skills and their output. And so I think, you know, uh, certainly <laughs> that decision on my behalf a long time ago was reflective of, of many of those fears of not feeling included um, and also being judged based upon who you are and what you look like. Now, how then do we even begin to close a $16 trillion gap? I'd love to hear some examples of if we do this, it would generate this much more output in the American economy. Sure, absolutely. I mean, one thing we looked at um, was kind of the, the domino effect of if you don't have access to housing in an area with great schools, if you don't have a great education, then that affects uh, where you choose to work um, in terms of what industry. If you're not in the right industry, quote unquote, or these high wage industries, that's going to affect your long term income. Um, so and that also income affects wealth. So you have to start somewhere. And, and fortunately, there are lots of different areas where individuals, governments, and corporations can all uh, contribute. Uh, so certainly when you think about what corporations can do, I mean, certainly you can make sure that you have um, diverse boards who can help you with your diversity and inclusion initiatives, making sure that your employees are all paid equitably, um, making sure that at the educational level that students across the country are receive the correct amount or the equal amounts of funding so that they have access to education. And even in, in the space of, of, of financing, where it's more often that uh, black entrepreneurs find that it's very difficult for them to be approved for loans. And even if they are approved for loans, that those loans you know, aren't always uh, equal to what they expected. So there are definitely ways that, that uh, banks, uh, governments, individuals can all work together to make sure that we help close these racial gaps. You mentioned entrepreneurship. We cover tech and Silicon Valley on this program, venture capital as well. This area is a huge source of new jobs and growth in uh, the global economy. Talk to uh, elaborate on where you see some of the inequities in this part of business. Absolutely. Well, one challenge is certainly in terms of labor market segmentation, where oftentimes uh, Black people, persons of color, may not find themselves in the industries that are in STEM or economics or finance, and also may find themselves in industries that are highly susceptible to automation. And so just getting into the right field is important. And even once you're in that field, it can be very difficult, especially in venture capitalism, where many people may not look like you. And so relationships are so important in terms of getting someone to an investor to buy into your product and be willing to invest in you. And so if you don't have the access to those relationships or those relationships are difficult to form, then you're going to find inequities there. What's been the reaction from policymakers to your report? Have you sufficiently raised the alarm to the people that matter and can make a change? 
Well, I mean, we have received some reactions and most of the reactions have been quite good in terms of, well, uh, you know, thank you for highlighting these, these issues and the economic costs and, you know, how can we think about addressing these areas, especially for, you know, uh, for banks, um, governments, uh, the central bank and all the uh, regional banks, you know, what can be done in terms of metrics, collecting metrics, making sure that you're accounting for the problem. What can be done in terms of outreach, making sure that there's equity in terms of financing and access to capital? So, I mean, for the most part, we've received very positive feedback, and uh, hopefully this report will uh, encourage others to do more.